Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about Monstera adansonii variegated or variegata. Let's have a look at this wonderful plant right here. I can tell you, I've been wanting this plant for several years, but uh, it has always been too expensive and I couldn't just get it anywhere. For years it was very, very hard to come by and um, it was just impossible for me to buy it, but recently I acquired this plant. It's the uh, variegated version of the Monstera adansonii. A couple of years ago, maybe a year or two ago, uh, this plant sold for $5,000. Prices have come down luckily and nowadays I think you can get it for $250 to $500. Maybe not such a big plant but uh, with two or three leaves you can get it for $250 which I think is a fantastic price. Let's start and talk about variegation first before we go into the plant care for Monstera adansonii variegated. So variegation what I have to say about this plant is I got a really highly variegated plant but at some point unfortunately all the variegation was gone. It turned completely green and I thought oh no I have, I've lost my variegated version of this plant but you shouldn't worry because variegation will come back. What you can do is uh, you just cut and snip your plants where the um, nodes are and yeah it's almost a gamble or jeopardy whether you get variegation or not but a lot of the cuttings turned out uh, to be variegated again. And what you can also have a look at is, is the stem. I'm going to try to show you right here. The stem looks, uh, looks fairly green here, but if you have a lot of variegation in the stem, it's a good indication that leaves might turn out variegated again. Yes, yeah, so if you snip it off, like if the new node, if the new auxiliary bud is going to um, grow where the uh, variegation is, then the leaves are going to be variegated as well. Or if a new growth point is going to develop where the stem is completely green, the leaves are going to be completely green. So it's really a gamble, but you can cut it back and you have a good chance of getting variegation again. Well, let's talk about the care of this house plant. Let's start with soil. As always with um, Aracea or Monstera and also Philodendron plants, they need well draining, airy soil. What I'm using is Lehutza Pond. It's a inorganic uh, volcanic substrate. It also contains fertilizer and this works perfectly for this plant. It's in a semi-hydro pot, so there's water underneath and it's uh, self-watering. That works really great, but usually I recommend aeroid soil. So what is aeroid soil? What is an aeroid mix? Aeroid soil or an aeroid mix uh, consists of bark, charcoal, peat, perlite, uh, all these like grainy, chunky bits uh, of substrate that will help to aerate the, the soil. So it's really important that air is going to flow um, through the pot or th through the substrate because the roots need air. Without air, they're going to suffocate and also wilt and die and you're gonna have problems with root rot. You can really prevent that with uh, well-draining soil because in the beginning I often had instances where the soil was very compact. I watered the Monstera and the Sony I variegated and then uh, within a couple of days the, the soil was still wet and this will lead to root rot. You then have to take out your whole plant and uh, you have to snip off the mushy roots and repot everything again and take new substrate. So make sure the substrate is well draining. Never use like general potting soil for uh, house plants or plants in general. This is not going to work for aeroids. It's not going to work for a Monstera and a Sonii variegated. All right, so um, light. Lighting is really important for plants because they uh, contain chlorophyll. It's needed for uh, plant growth and Variegated plants are very particular in that matter because they need a lot of sunlight and they need a lot of light in general. They need more light than a non-variegated plant because obviously they have less green and less chlorophyll to uh, produce sugars and that will help them to grow and thrive. So the variegated version of Monstera adansonii needs a little bit more sunlight or light in general compared to the uh, non-variegated Monstera adansonii. I recommend bright indirect light for your Monstera and Sonia variegated. Usually you achieve that with an eastern facing or western facing window. In terms of light, you have to be careful that you do not provide too much light because if there's 
direct sunlight for several hours, it might scorch and burn the leaves of your house plant. Particularly with Monstera Anasonia variegated, there's a lot of chatter and discussion about um, whether the white parts of the leaves are going to turn brown and wilt because of too much or too little light. From my personal experience, the white parts are only going to turn brown if they do not get enough light and also if the humidity is not high enough. And you often see variegated versions that have really brown and, and crinkly leaves. I don't really like to see that, so I try to provide high humidity and also sufficient light, but not too much light because if there's too much sunlight, it might also scorch and burn the leaves. So I really want to avoid that for Monstera Adansoniae variegated. Temperature. So uh, in terms of temperature, Monstera Adansoniae needs 65 to 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. This is uh, roughly 19 or 18 to uh, 26, 27 degrees Celsius, something like that. Uh, within this range, uh, this uh, houseplant is completely happy and it's also something you can easily produce in your home, so you shouldn't have to worry about uh, temperature too much. Then my favorite subject, humidity. Humidity is important. It's important for Monstera Adansonii variegated. Uh, the more humidity you can provide, the better. I usually try to get into the 90s, but I can only achieve that in a grow tent or in a container. I would recommend 50% or more. 50% or more is completely fine. Usually my house is uh, in, the, in the 40s. So what I do is I'm using a humidifier and put it really close to the plants. Not too close because the leaves shouldn't be um, wet all the time. So uh, a humidifier works. Also put plants really closely together. This will increase um, the environment humidity and Monstera plants really, really enjoy high humidity. So um, that's all about humidity. Let's move on to watering. Yeah, let's talk about watering. So yeah, watering is uh, quite easy if you have the right substrate and really frustrating if you have the wrong substrate. So if you have great well-draining airy substrate, you can do nothing wrong. You could basically almost water your Monstera Adansonii variegate every day. It, nothing would happen. But as a general rule of thumb, I water my plants about once a week. So. I do the same for Monstera Adansonii variegated. I water it once a week. Um, I soak it like uh, with a lot of water and let it drain. So you have to let it drain. That's really important. Water should come out right out of the pot uh, when you're watering. This is also an indication that you're using the right substrate. In terms of water, you can use all kinds of water. I think the less impurifications uh, the water has, the better. I'm using tap water that works just fine. I have a reverse osmosis uh, system. This is really, really good because there's no pollutants in there. If I would have the opportunity, I definitely would use rainwater. You can collect rainwater, which works great for your house plants. This brings me to the next topic, fertilizer. Fertilizer is really important if you have a houseplant in a pot. At some point, there's not going to be any more nutrients uh, in the pot. Therefore, you need to fertilize your houseplants. Generally, what you're doing, you can do the same with Monstera and Sonia variegated, is that you fertilize your houseplants at a regular basis. I fertilize Monstera and Sonia every two weeks. So every two weeks, I will use some liquid fertilizer that I dilute with water. I usually use a half to a third of the strength and prefer to fertilize rather often in the growing season. So the growing season is spring and summer. I refrain from uh, fertilizing this plant in winter, in winter time, in autumn and winter. I uh, hardly ever fertilize maybe every two to three months because Mozzarella and Sonii variegate is not going to grow that much in winter and autumn. So therefore, it's really important to fertilize it in spring and summer where the main growth uh, spurts are going to happen. Let's talk about growth for a second here. Monstera Adansonii variegated is a great grower, as well as Monstera Adansonii. It generally produces a leaf every two weeks, I would say, as a general rule of thumb in spring and summer, and a little bit less, maybe one leaf a month in autumn and winter time. So it's a moderately fast growing houseplant and it's a lot of fun to watch and see Monstera and Sonia variegated grow. What you should do is uh, buy a moss pole as I have here. So a moss pole, uh, generally uh, a pole will help the plant to climb. 
The roots are going to attach to the moss pole. Monstera donsonii variegated will produce bigger and bigger leaves the more it grows and also it will mature much faster. Stems will become thicker and you will get a much nicer looking houseplant. You can also let Monstera adansonii trail, trail down. That way you have smaller leaves. Uh, it can also look nice, but their natural habit is to uh, grow upwards and produce bigger and bigger leaves. So provide a moss pole. There's a lot of poles you can buy. Usually the ones you can buy, they are not like real moss poles. They're usually like cocoa fiber poles. Um, they also work. It's really important that your Monstera and Sonia variegated can set their air roots into the substrate, uh, which is here sphagnum moss. Uh, this way they're gonna attach themselves and that's what you wanna try to achieve. You can build your own moss poles and uh, it's quite easy actually. You need sphagnum moss, you need uh, some kind of wire. You need chicken wire and sphagnum moss. This way you can easily build a moss pole on your own. What is great if you can is uh, if you keep your moss pole wet. If it's wet it's much easier for the air roots to set into the pole but it's not a requirement. So anyways your Monstera donsonii variegated is going to set its air roots into the pole once you provide it and you put it a little bit into the substrate so it's really holding up really well in the pot. Yeah, potting, uh, potting. Monstera donsonii variegated is a, uh, an epiphyte, so usually in nature they grow on other trees and also other objects, therefore they do not need a lot of substrate. It's not very important to provide a huge pot, uh, something like that. It's actually better if you have a, a smaller pot because once they are done with setting their roots into the pot, they will focus on growing upwards and focus on leaf and foliage production and this is what you really want to see. So provide them big enough pot and uh, let your plants grow upwards. When I repot, I do it like every two or three years with Monstera and Sonia variegated and only if I really need and, and have to. And what you should look out for is a pot that is maybe an inch or two bigger than the previous pot. Do not use too big of a pot because watering and everything is going to be extremely difficult. So I rarely or hardly repot Monstera and Sonia variegated unless it gets root and pot bound. You will see signs of that if the leaves are going to get smaller, if they turn yellow, if you feel like something is not right. Sometimes it can be the case that the roots are circling in the, in the pot and they have nowhere else to go and they used up most of the substrate. This is where you really should repot or probably should repot a little bit before that. Propagation. Monstera adansonii variegated can easily be propagated. What you need is a node. You need at least one node. On the internet you will read, uh, I propagated a Monstera plant with just a leaf and no nodes and suddenly roots started to emerge. Well, that may very well be, but without a node you will never have a cutting turn into a plant. So what you need is at least one node. You can have a leaf or two, but it also works with just a stem cutting. So when you cut Monstera adansonii variegated, make sure that you have one node. Usually a node is just at the height of the uh, air roots, so they are a great indication. And also it's a little bit more bulky. You will easily see the different sections when you have a look at the uh, stems of Monstera adansonii variegated. In terms of medium for propagation, I prefer water in the beginning. Like I usually leave my cuttings in water for two to three weeks once the roots start to emerge and start to develop and I then transfer the cuttings into sphagnum moss. It is important that once you cut the stem that you let it colors over. So the cutting needs to colors over for, for an hour or two depending on how thick the stem is and afterwards you can put it in your preferred medium. If you don't do that, you will have rot immediately because it needs to form like some kind of film, protective film over uh, the cutting before you can uh, start propagating it. What I do is I um, leave it in water. As said, you exchange the water like every week or so. 
so it doesn't get old. And uh, after that, I transfer it in moist sphagnum moss. So you can press the sphagnum moss, you, you put it into water, you press it once you, you um, soak the sphagnum moss in the water, and then it's uh, moist enough, but not soaking wet. And this you can then use uh, to propagate your Monstera nasoniae variegated. You put the cutting into the, the moss and you wait until roots and also uh, leaves start to emerge. Usually uh, roots are going to develop first, but it can also be that you see a leaf. And also um, in terms of propagation, what is important is humidity. So you need very, very high humidity. The higher the humidity is, the better and the faster your cutting will uh, propagate and start to develop. Also, you need heat, especially for roots. Uh, heat is really important. So I recommend to use a heat mat underneath your propagation box or um, underneath your, your cutting so roots are starting to emerge because they really like worms. What I use is a plastic container. I have it completely enclosed and I um, open it every two or three days or so to increase the airflow and let old air out so new air is flowing into the container. This way uh, that's absolutely fine. You don't even need holes or something like that. Uh, some kind of airflow every couple of days, some kind of air exchange is absolutely fine. Well, Monsera Sonia is probably one of the easiest plants to propagate. Like once you let it grow and, and cut it in uh, too many different cuttings and sections, you, you will have a multiple of your initial plants. It's really a lot of fun to propagate Monstera Sonii. And there's no difference with Monstera Sonii variegated. I think the only thing I would say is you should watch and see where the new growth is coming from. Like it really depends whether it's on a green section or a white section or a section between white and green that will influence how variegated your plant is going to become or at least the, the next few leaves. Let me show you a, a close-up of Monstera Adansonii variegated uh, just to show you where you can cut. So um, it's very hard to see here but um, these are many different sections. You can see that uh, the section between uh, the node and the stem uh, are really small. So each of these small sections you could use uh, for propagation. And usually the higher the light is, uh, the closer these sections will be together because your plants are going to reach for sunlight. So you will have more nodes and also leaves closer together if you provide a lot of sunlight and therefore you have a lot of more sections you could potentially propagate. Uh, moving on to the next section now. Yeah, pests. Houseplant pests are horrible. Um, the worst of the worst are actually thrips. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like I still have thrips on this uh, plant at the moment. They're so hard to get rid of. It's almost impossible, unfortunately. What you can do is uh, you spray your plant, you try to spritz them, uh, chat them away from the leaves. But unfortunately, most pests are not just on the leaves. They usually set their eggs into the soil and substrate. So you also have to flush the substrate every couple of days once you see an infestation. What you can do is you can buy uh, beneficial nematodes. There's a lot of growers that use beneficial nematodes all the time. Like every two to three weeks, they exchange these, uh, these little bags of um, beneficial nematodes that you can put on the plant. So they're always protected. It's like a preventative uh, measure to uh, never get any houseplant pests. So thrips are the worst. I had mealybugs before. Mealybugs, they're easy to spot. They're white. Uh, you can just squish them and take them off. You can also take a cotton swab with some alcohol, diluted alcohol, and you put it on the uh, mealybugs and uh, it's you're gonna get rid of uh, mealy box that way. Thrips, sorry, I haven't uh, talked about that. Thrips are usually black or brown. They're like longish. And uh, these are the mature thrips. The baby thrips, if you will, um, the larvae, they are white and really uh, small to spot. They will also be in the substrate, but usually thrips, you will see them on the underside of your house plant. They will eat the plant matter and you will see little holes. You will also see discoloration on the leaves and um, you will really see distorted growth. And this is um, 
where you really should become wary and search all your plant. Generally, it's really a good rule of thumb to check your plants every couple of days because once you see an outbreak of pests, you have to take uh, the infested plant and quarantine it, put it away from the other uh, house plants because pests are really going to spread very, very quickly. And it's a nasty thing, absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment and watch out for the next video. Thank you so much. Bye. See you.